How to make great jazz lines on a minor 251. People are drawn to happiness and success. As much as happiness and success is a part of our lives, melancholy, broken love and the blues is a part of our lives. Music reflects our lives. Musicians and artists with hard lives love the sound of minor, which often reflects the less happy times in our lives. Generally, we all like great music written in minor. Many, many tunes in all kinds of music, in all genres, are played in minor. So you need to be well traversed in playing in the minor keys and also playing your 2, 5, 1 in minor. Get into the minor 251 chords, learn the basics of the 251 minor scales, play and analyze two lovely and well played minor 251. Hi there, I'm Sir Belgo. Welcome to Sir Belgo Saxophone Lessons. If you get a lot of value out of these tutorials, you're welcome to like and subscribe. Get the free saxophone PDF by subscribing to my newsletter and get the download link on my website. Here comes how to make great jazz lines on the minor 251. We'll start with the basic chords of the minor 251. One of the important things to get right when playing over all chord progressions is what are your target notes? The target notes or the chord notes spells out the function of the chords you're playing. We need to get the chord notes right so we know how to build up our 251 lines. We'll start in the great key of A minor and no sharps and no flats. Our 251 looks like this B half diminished, E7 flat 9, A minor 7. The chord notes are taken out of the key of A minor. No usual sounds there, no sharps, no flats. Here is the B half diminished chord. <laughs> B, the D, the F, the A, the B is the root, the D is the third, the F the fifth, the A is the seventh. The chord notes of the E7 flat 9 looks and sounds like this. We have the E, the G sharp, the B, the D and the F. The 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9, the flat 9. Here goes. <laughs> that the G sharp, the third, is not in the key of A minor. The G sharp is not a diatonic note. We have borrowed this G sharp from the A major key where the G sharp functions as the leading tone towards the A. We really would like that leading tone, the guide tone, towards the A on our dominant chord. That's why we borrowed it from major. More on this in another tutorial on analyze and recognize your 251 in minor, coming later. The A minor 7 is quite regular, no abnormalities there. We're just playing normal notes, no sharps, no funny notes, no flats. <laughs> we have the A, the C, the E, the G and the B as the ninth. We have now established all our chord notes of the 251 and these chord notes are also our target notes, the notes that describes the function of each chord the 2, the 5, the 1. The chord notes, the target notes are one of the most important things to learn when playing and improvising jazz. To really learn the chord notes I recommend you to check this playlist on how to practice the chord notes and how to really get this into your playing. Check this play playlist here and of course it's also in the description in my video here below. So please check the checklist to get really into how to practice these chord notes and get them into your playing. There's a lot of videos there, check the material, get the chord notes right, get them into your playing, 
The next step is getting into the basic scales of the minor 251. The basic scales we get from the A minor key and basically just paste these onto the chord. The B half diminished scale is like this, it's the second degree in the A minor scale. So we start on a B just going up the scale seven notes. <laughs> Going on to the E7 flat 9. The E7 flat 9 is the fifth of the A minor scale. But we have this great G sharp in it. So we just switch the G with the G sharp and it looked like this. The E7 flat 9 scale in A minor, the A minor 251. Starting on an E. seven scale and that's of course starting on an A in the A minor seven. Ready? Get a good practice of these scales. They are a great part and you really need these scales when playing the minor two five one. I really really recommend you to check the following playlist in how to practice scales. There are tons of videos on my YouTube channel where you can Check this out. Check the following playlist. It's of course in the description on this video. Check the playlist on how to play your scales, how to practice your scales and really get this into the fingers. Having run through the basic chords and scale of the minor 251, you need to know how to put this together. In a moment we'll run through the 251 examples which I play and analyze for you. Then you can see what kind of building blocks I'm using and I have used to build 251s. A great asset in how to learn to play and improvise over the minor 251 is 20 basic minor 251 building blocks plus 20 basic 251 licks. It's a PDF I made which shows you what building blocks you can work with when constructing 251 licks. You really get a good insight in making the 2-5 licks, starting slowly by creating licks, moving forward to improvising minor 2-5-1. This is a learning process and a great way to grow in this. In the licks coming up right now, I use my building blocks and I construct 2-5-1 licks. Playing other people's music, like playing other people's 2-5-1 licks, what is the use? In a moment, I'll play with two of my 251 licks for you. But what is the use for you to do this? What do I learn by playing other musicians' lines or licks? There's a great deal to learn in this process. One, getting into the musical taste of another musician. Two, learning what sound they like to play with. Three, learning how another musician sounds on a specific chord or a specific progression. Four, Get the articulation and phrasing of other musicians. Five, get new ideas and inspiration and move this into your own playing. A quick run through all the points. Getting the musical taste of a player. What do I mean by this? Well, if some musicians have a special taste and they tend to play that taste in a certain situation, you get into this, you find their way of playing, and maybe you want to sound like that. So it's a great way to say, oh, hey, that's happening there. I really like this. Think of all the factors that are in there. So it could be a live situation, it could be a studio, it could be a teaching situation. What does that specific musician think in that situation? And how do they sound when they are in that situation? Learning what someone sounds like. In different periods in all people's life, they require different tastes. You develop a palette. Exactly the same thing happens with musicians. Coltrane is a great example. If you listen to early Coltrane, it's completely different than later Coltrane with sheets of sound and a lot of outside weird stuff, pentatonics going on. But in the beginning with Miles Davis, when, when Coltrane got known, he just played great, great bebop. Learning how somebody sounds in certain period, that is using chromaticism, alterations. How do they phrase? How do they alternate their, 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 their sound? Do they use octatonic scales, pentatonic, sheets of music, bebop playing, triads? There's so much to learn in 
what does this person sound like in this period? Getting more concrete into the material. So what does the person, what does the musician exactly play on that F sharp minor seven chord? So that's very interesting when you start really checking someone's solo out. Getting into the concrete sound of a specific chord. That's definitely one of the steps you want to take when copying other people's 251 licks. What is the person exactly playing at that point? Articulation and phrasing. Yes, you definitely need to check out other people's articulation and phrasing. Charlie Parker, Cannonball Adderley, Coltrane, Dexter Gordon, Michael Brecker, Chris Potter, Mark Turner. Check their phrasing, check their articulation. It's so very, very important to have great articulation and great phrasing. If you want to hear my opinion on great articulation, check my video. I have a great video on articulation, so check it. Look in the description below, there's a great link to the articulation video of mine. Borrowing ideas from others is a great way to get better. If you do not listen to other people's playing, how are you supposed to learn? Well, you can do it by yourself. Invent the wheel again. But all these great players already played so much history. So why not learn from them? Just take the best ones and say, hey, I want to learn to play like you. If you play like Charlie Parker, you will sound great. And then from there, you can start developing your old style. There is so much great stuff hidden in the history. Just dig down, start copying, start copying, start playing other people's stuff. This is very important process. We listen to music, we hear other people play, and we get inspired. And this inspiration, we need to motivate ourselves to play greater. You need to borrow everything you can, but you also need to develop on all the stuff you borrowed. So make it your own and develop it. These five points is a small part of what you can get out of copying and borrowing and playing other people's ideas. Here is my two 251 legs in minor. What you have been waiting for, here they come. Please copy them, please borrow them. Please take them and make them your own. Running down the B half diminished scale from the fifth to the root, then going up that arpeggio of the B half diminished chord, hitting that G sharp on the E7 flat 9, the third, going down the minor dominant scale. On the E of the E7 flat 9, I add that extra great chromatic note from the bebop scale. Check the video on the bebop scale, <laughs> look in the description. There's a lot of videos I want to refer to, but check the bebop scale video, check the description below. Jumping down to the low third of the E7 and running up that E7 scale. Coming in on the 11 on the A minor and then going down the A minor scale. You can also see that scale run as a surrounding note around the C of the A minor 7. Ending on a C major arpeggio and upper structure of the A minor 9. Ending on the 9 of the A minor 7. The second 2, 5, 1 lick in minor. Here goes. <laughs> Starting on that arpeggio up on the B half diminished chord. Going down the B half diminished scale from the 9th to the 7th, playing a chromatic approach to the 3rd of the E7, the G sharp. Picking up the upper structure of the E7, the B diminished triad, the B, the D and the F. Using the bebop scale on the E7 chord, the E, E flat and the D. Approach notes to the C, the B and the D. Playing up the scale B, C, D, E and ending on the major 6, the low major 6 of the A minor. In the analysis of the legs you see that I divide all the parts into small chunks and give them a particular name. This is the chromatic scale, this is the bebop, this is the arpeggio. 
This helped me greatly to identify all the parts in another context, for example by another player. Oh, he's playing that bebop, he's playing that arpeggio, he's playing that scale down. So when I hear that or when I see that or when I notice this, it's very familiar to me. I can recognize it immediately. This is a very easy way to pick up something from another player and play it. Check the building blocks. That's exactly what I mean in my 20 basic minor 251 building blocks and 20 basic 251 licks in minor. This is exactly what I'm doing there. I'm making these building blocks, I'm making it clear that, oh, this is a building block that's a arpeggio going up. Oh, this is the B half diminished scale going down. This is the chromatic approach on the G sharp to the E7. I'm using these, I'm giving you these building blocks and then I'm making them afterwards into 20 new licks. So start checking this out. Go to my shop and uh, find it, or you can also uh, find it on the Patreon page I have where all great information is. This is a great learning process, so take it and grow with it. What I just mentioned, check my shop, check my Patreon page where you can find this great asset. If you like more great saxophone information on 251s, just keep watching here, keep staying on this channel, and the next great 251 video will come right to you. In the beginning of this video, I played the great tune of You'd Be So Nice To Come Home To. If you'd like the transcription of this, you can find it in my shop and you can find it on my Patreon page. So check those links in the description below. And of course, if you want my free stuff, there's a lot of free stuff to get by subscribing to my newsletter. You can get the full subscription of the lesson and you can get my great saxophone PDF practice. Go subscribe to my newsletter and get all the good stuff. And you of course get great updates on when is the new video, what's it about, what do you learn, what is happening there, what's happening here on the Patreon, on my page, in my life, what do I play and how do I play it. Thank you very much and have a great time. This is Sam Balagor's Saxophone Lessons. See you next time. Play music. Have fun.